Hi, I'm Cliff, and this is my garage. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace a position sensor. Hey, welcome back to the garage, and if this is your first time joining me, thanks for dropping by. So this is my friend Aubrey's 2013 Kia Rio, and it's having a bit of a problem. She told me that it is stalling out when she comes out to a uh, uh, like a stoplight, and then has a lot of trouble restarting it, or sometimes just flat out has trouble starting it at all. Uh, a couple of things came to mind immediately. One is a mass airflow sensor, and the other was a crankshaft or camshaft position sensor. Those uh, those are some kind of classic symptoms of those things going wrong. So I took and put on one of these inexpensive little ODB2 code readers, and I'll give you a link to the one I use down in the video description below. It's very simple. It uses Wi-Fi to connect to my phone, which I then use as the controller to, to you know, use it and read it. And sure enough, I got a couple of different codes. And these two codes basically mean one of them is I can't find the crankshaft position sensor, and the other is, hey, the crankshaft position sensor is giving me some crazy values that don't make any sense. So it definitely looks like between the codes and her description of what's going on, that the crankshaft position sensor is our culprit. Luckily, replacing the crankshaft position sensor on this car is just dead trivial. It's super easy to do. It's probably a 15 to 20 minute job tops beginning to end and best part of all the price the set replacing the sensor the price of the sensor is only like 25 bucks I, i'll give you a link to the one that i bought again down in the video description below i just bought it off of amazon now one issue we're going to have is just getting to the crankshaft position sensor and i'm going to start calling it the cps because that's just a whole lot easier not to be confused with the camshaft position sensor which is basically does the same kind of job except for the camshaft and it has the same abbreviation. Anyhow, the CPS, the crankshaft position sensor, is on the front of the engine. It's pretty easily accessible except for the fact that it's on the, kind of the bottom front of the engine. And since the Rio is so low, you're going to have to pick it up to get to it. Now that's pretty simple, you just have to pick the car up, put it on jack stands, or if you're lucky like I am, you're gonna use the lift to pick it up. So let's get the car up in the air, we'll take a look at uh, where exactly you find this thing. It's been pretty tough getting the camera up under here, getting an angle where you can see what I'm doing here because of various shields that are in way. I used to feel like taking them off. But we're under the engine, or underneath the car now. This here is the oil filter. The front of the car is like off in that direction, so the fan is up here. So here's your oil filter, and then just next to it, about six inches away on the front of the engine, right there, that is your crankshaft position sensor, and there's the bolt that holds it on. The wire comes off the sensor through this little clip right here that attaches to this brace and then on up and this is the other end up here where it connects into the engine's wiring harness. So we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket to take this loose. Okay, don't lose the bolt. And there. Position here comes right out. Let me just take a screwdriver or something similar, just work up underneath that, and it pops right loose. Getting the connector loose is a two stage process. First, you slide something in here, get that little knob loose, and then the connector on the end just slides right off. Now, I don't know what genius decided this was a good idea, but the way that this mounts onto the bracket, it's virtually impossible to get in there and release the catch. So the easy way is just put a screwdriver on the, uh, the back of the connector and just hit it. 
and it pops it loose. Now it's the question of getting the CPS out and getting the wire down through here. Just a bit of a pain because it's just so tight corners. There we go. Do you notice the CPS has this little sealant ring here? Make sure that comes out with it because the other sensor has one already. I put the new CPS thread, the connector up through here. Slide it back in and then arrange everything so you can pop this connector back in properly. Right there. Now to get the connector back onto that metal mount and then Put the cap back on. Make sure you turn this the right way. It only goes on in one direction. We get the connector on. Our last step, get the uh, bolt holes lined up and put the retaining bolt back in. Okay, let's see if it starts. Now, remember, when she brought it over here, you would have to crank on it five to ten seconds before it would start, and then it would just kind of die again. It would take four or five tries before it would finally catch up and start running to where you could actually drive it. So, hopefully, we get a start on the very first try. And now another issue that I forgot to mention was that her tachometer was no longer working. I figured it was probably related to the CPS and sure enough, once we replaced it, the tach began working just fine. Now, before you go, go down there, smack that thumbs up button, give me a like on the video, let YouTube and Rumble know that you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. And while you're down there on YouTube and Rumble both, go ahead and click on that subscribe button, become one of my subscribers. And then finally, if you wanna be kept up to date with everything that's going on here in the garage, whether it's repair jobs on friends' cars, upgrades to the garage, my Cayman track car, all that stuff, on YouTube, go and click on that bell icon. That turns on notifications for this channel, and that way YouTube will let you know every time that I post something new from here in Cliff's Garage. I'll see you next time.